So I am Erin sandler Raffi, the Executive Director for the Lexington Chamber of Commerce, and I'm speaking today with Sandia Iyer and Casey Haggerty from the town's Office of Economic Development. Thank you both for being here. Um, we're talking about the microenterprise grants that are available through the state for businesses with five or fewer employees. So this is a grant that Lexington was awarded as part of um, a group of towns, right? Um, and it's got a really short deadline on it of next week. So we wanted to get information out about that. So these two very graciously agreed to answer some questions for me so we can get the word out. Um, so first of all, thank you for, for taking the time to do this. Um, the first question I was gonna ask you is what are the income eligibility limits on this? And I'm gonna share my screen because I know you sent me a graphic, Sandia, let me pull That's that fun. up. Okay. So Thank tell you, me Erin. what I'm looking at here, please. Thank you, Erin, first and foremost, uh, for inviting us. And uh, yes, any business owner who has five or fewer employees, including the, uh, the owner himself, it may be uh, part-time employees or seasonal employees. Everyone counted, it has to be five or fewer. Um, but as this is specifically for, uh, for micro-enterprise businesses, we also are looking at the LMI, which is the uh, low and moderate income persons data. And this, this data that you're looking at is uh, specifically for, uh, for, this, uh, for the Boston area. So, so um, the highlighted portion shows you if a family, um, it depends, the, the low to moderate income depends on family's household income. It's okay. like 80% um, or equal to the 80% of the median income uh, for the area where they reside. So okay. basically, if you, if you look at the chart, uh, it gives you persons in a family and it also gives you where you should be. Okay, so for what we call sort of the basic family of four, right? Yes. The, the family has to be making $96,250 or less, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Yeah. yes. Okay, and that's, that would be the income for the business owner as well as if they have a, a working partner or whatever, um, both of that combined would have to be 96000 or less. No, all the owners uh, are... Um, it is all only based on the owners. So it would be for each owner, we would be seeing each owner's household income. But what, so but what I'm trying like, to clarify is that if the owner has a partner not working the, in the business, you know, a spouse, for example, not working in the business and they have their own income, the combined family income is what this is based off of, right? That's okay. Good. That's okay. Good. All right, I'm gonna stop sharing that and come back to, there we go. Um, come back to us. So how, how does a business owner figure out if they qualify? So at this point, these are the only two uh, biggest criteria that, that we are looking at. They have to be based in Lexington, definitely, of course, right. uh, and they have to have five or fewer employees. They should be still in business, uh, which wow. means that they, they have not, um, they are not out of business or they have not filed for a bankruptcy. Um, and uh, they uh, fall under the LMI. Uh, and right. if they do, if they look at the chart and they, they think they do, then definitely they should go ahead and apply for this grant. Okay. And I think it's also important to note that the business has to be, uh, had to be established before January 1st, 2019 to qualify for this as well. January 1st of 2019. So they have yeah. to have been in business for more than a year and a half. Correct. That's good. Correct. All right, those are, those are good guidelines to know. If someone accepted PPP money or an advance grant from the CARES Act, can they still apply for this? They can apply for it as, as long as they are not applying for the same, uh, same amount or the same uh, expenditure that they had applied for under the okay. PPP. So they can't um, use the money for the exact same thing they were supposed to be using the money yet. That makes sense. Okay. So um, I, I just want to note that this is subject to auditing. So they, they need to make sure that they are not double dipping. Okay. And actually that's one thing to stress, right? It's a grant. It's not a loan. So it doesn't have to be paid back. 
you know, there is, there's no forgiveness criteria for this. And are there limits what the money can be used for? So as far as the limits go, they have extended the limit, uh, limits. Uh, so the money can be used for rent, mortgages, uh, utilities, payroll. Uh, but this morning, uh, they also extended it uh, to any technical assistance. For example, if it's a, it's a small uh, restaurant, for example, and they are trying to extend outdoor seating and they need to purchase any equipment because these are, these are special circumstances wherein they wouldn't have in normal circumstances, they wouldn't have done this. Um, but due to COVID-19, they need to spe uh, specially purchase an equipment that will help them serve better during the winter right. time. They can definitely purchase it under this. Um, this. So as long as uh, um, they can show how they are going to use this, this grant um, uh, sufficiently, but at the same time, judicially, uh, to help their business stay afloat, they should be fine. Okay. Having said that, they need to submit a copy of proof um, within 45 days of making that purchase. Uh, okay. Yeah. You can't just and, plan to make a purchase. You have to actually follow through and show that you, you did it. Okay. And use that grant towards it. One more thing I would add. The great thing about this grant is that you can also use it for reimbursement purposes. If say, suppose uh, you've just made the, per uh, you've already purchased an equipment or something, uh, but that happened after March 10th, which is when the governor had ordered uh, the, uh, uh, the special orders came out after mm -hmm. March 10th. Any purchases made after March 10th, which are towards COVID-19 and they fall under, um, under this uh, this criteria, you can apply uh, for a reimbursement through this grant. So if, if a company had bought, say, one of the electrostatic foggers sometime in you know May or June or something like that, they could use this money to pay themselves back for having made that purchase. Mm -hmm. Till the time they have, yeah, till the time they have proof uh, that they can submit. That's it. good, that's good to know. How do they show that they were adversely affected by COVID because that's one of the other stipulations. They can show it like um, either by showing their bank statements, budgeting, or they can also have a loss of income um, pay stubs or something they, if they have unemployment payments, uh, if they, ha they can show that. that. Those are like physical documents. Mm -hmm. But the application in itself um, has um, has a box wherein you can, in hundred or fewer words, you can make an explanation of how they've been affected, how the business has been affected in the past months, and how how this grant can actually apply uh, apply towards their current business and help them um, okay. stay afloat. Okay, so it, so you can simply make a statement. Yes. That, right. Okay. That's fine. Um, what documents will they need to pull together? So they will require, uh, any business uh, needs a DUNS number um, to okay. be added to the application. They'll need a W-9 form request. Uh, they will need the tax uh, identification number and the certification. They will need uh, certificates of good standing uh, from the state, Secretary of State. Uh, I believe they'll need some, uh, they have to show that they are in good standing with the town as well. Okay. Um, and they would need a copy of their lease or mortgage bill. Uh, they will need documentation, um, as I said before, you know, bank statements of uh, loss of income or uh, anything which is related to equal to what they're asking for assistance. Mm -hmm. um, and then an itemized. So, for example, they can they can actually use the ten thousand dollars to go further, and you know, they can have different things uh, to. Uh, apply it towards different things so mm -hmm. it has to be itemized and they have to show it in an itemized format uh, documentation what they'll be applying this towards okay okay so they do have to declare in the application i intend to use the money in this way and itemize all of that yeah okay and i think if anyone has any confusion over the documents or where to get them um we're happy to talk directly with applicants and review their their packet okay Someone actually asked me the other day about um, the in in service of the good standing certification. 
if they if someone has filed for the extension on taxes do they count as being in good standing because they haven't yet dealt with their 2019 taxes so they can actually if they have that um they can actually show the extension application and they i'm sure they they received a receipt when mm -hmm. they did that so they can attach that um with the application for now but so once they get the good qualify them it wouldn't but okay. they can definitely uh, once they get the certificate of good standing they have to produce that okay so is there anything else people should know uh, any other questions you've heard that um have come up in the course of talking about this grant one thing i want to stress that uh, as you mentioned before that deadline is like within uh, within 10 days, it's uh, it's the 25th of September. We are definitely trying to extend that uh, deadline period. Um, the other uh, other thing is that uh, we know the eligibility criteria and the questions are like pretty long and some of the micro enterprises are having difficulty with, uh, with second language. So we do have the application translated into several different, I think, I believe at this point, it's like eight different languages. Okay. that the application is available in and uh, we have all the um, all those applications available we haven't added the deadline date in in those languages just fis um, because it's, it's a moving target at this point mm -hmm. um, but uh, but if you have any questions or if the town can be of any help uh, as you start making uh, progressing towards the application just let us know um, give us a call and we'll help you also while you start the application if you feel that you don't have everything possible to complete the application in one go you can just save it and you can come back okay. to it oh, you don't have yeah you don't have to um you're not disqualified uh, right. you just need to save it and you can come back later to okay. finish the application yes would it be fair to say that if people have any doubts they should just go ahead and apply yes they should go ahead and apply absolutely okay. yeah um, because i know from my conversations with you one thing that has been very clear is we we really want to spend this money mm -hmm. right i mean lexington has eighty four thousand dollars awarded and we'd like to give it out because otherwise it just goes back to the state right and then they can do what they want with it that's correct yes okay so we we'd really like to see this money stay in Lexington and help Lexington businesses. Okay, great. Well, thank you both so much for taking the time. And um, I will make sure that when this video is posted that there's also a link to your office so people know how to get in touch with you. Thank you. All right, thanks, thanks very much. much. Thanks.